we've got a small radiator fan is working, turning nicely. That's no good. So we're gonna replace the large fan. If I can get to it. Twenty-five, I believe it is. which one we have to disconnect. Okay, once you have it out of its retainer, there's a clip here that you push, release, uh, release clip, and then pull apart. Okay, I think the fan will come out through the top. You can see all the congestion here. If, oh, motor fell right out. That's funny. This might actually help in the removal here. To install a new one, I might, I might just move the radiator hose to give me more room. You don't want to bend this too far, that'll break. I'm going to drain it here.
moving a minute ago. Remove the reservoir cap so that the system can let air into the system. Needs, the coolant level just needs to be lower than the uh, upper radiator hose so that way when I take the radiator, upper radiator hose off there won't be that much coolant that comes out. One more clamp right here. Okay, that should give us enough room to uh, insert the fan then. Just gotta transfer the mounting legs over. Come on. one's a bit taller. Hopefully it's not going to interfere with anything. NTCs. All the nuts are falling off. It's like a six-year-old drew that. Okay, and that's the, um, the this is the channel where this is going to be mounted. This mounting clip goes down here. We'll install install that later. And we're carefully going to lower it into place.
should go. Lots of plastic components, so be careful. Okay, and we can put two screws in here for the mounting legs. If I remember where I put them. check how tight it is if you're using an air gun because you have better feel when you use your hand okay now uh, the hose can go back on for the two hoses depending on the age of these plastic flanges it can be very brittle so be careful especially when you uh, reposition the clamps you don't want to let the clamps snap close. If the pliers slip, the clamp forcibly snaps closed and that, that in itself can uh, cause a flange to break. Okay, we're going to put this cover on later. So this can go on later. It's gonna go underneath the car now, finish up down there. Okay, here's the uh, bottom leg. Also check that one with the ratchet. Yeah, I think the uh, the wiring is probably longer than we need, but uh, that's all right. We can tuck it out of the way. The connect connector only fits one way. There's a flat end and a curved end, so it's just a matter of looking at the connector. And then uh, connecting it. Connect it till it clicks. Or push, it, push the connector until it clicks. Reposition it in its holder. Position the wiring in the channel here. see a place to uh, to push this connector in this little guy here so we'll just leave it like that it's not going to interfere with anything could actually uh, root this underneath here
I go, if there was a hole right here, I would stick that in. And actually, that's a bit too close to the fan for my liking. So I'm going to put a zip strap over here to the, so that it, it's held away against the radiator hose. Yeah, that zip tie doesn't have to be tight. It's just holding this away from the radiator fan. A couple more zip ties here to hold the uh, wiring in place. One more here. Cut the excess. Splash guard. There are usually more screws, but two is the minimum that's needed to hold this. Ideally you want two more here to keep this from flapping. Okay, before putting everything else back together, I'm going to start it up, make sure there are no leaks, rinse off any of the old cold, cold uh, spilled coolant. Before you start it, make sure there's oil in it. You can turn these counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't matter. Need to help speed up warm up. Uh, just hold the gas pedal at 1500 to 2000. Keep an eye on the fluid level. 
make sure coolant returns back into the bottle. You can see air bubbles, the air is bleeding out of the engine. And the level is dropping. Make sure to check for leaks. Make sure that the radiator fan fuse is okay. If you see burnt connections, replace it. If the fuse looks burnt, replace the fuse box. Sorry, if the, if the fuse box looks burnt, replace the fuse box. To uh, quickly check if both fans are working, turn on the air conditioning. Okay, on this one AC doesn't work, that's fine. Uh, turn the heater to high. Vents, uh, dash vents. I close all except for the driver's side here. That way it's easier for me to reach and monitor temperature. It should get warm fairly quickly. If it doesn't, you might have an air pocket or the water pump isn't uh, working. Keep an eye on the gauge. That's what I'm looking for. You're going to also make sure that all these nuts are tight. None of these should be getting hot. If you feel excessive heat, there's bad connection. You should be able to keep your finger on it indefinitely. That's the alternator wire, that's the main charging wire. All of these go into the car. None of them should get hot. I like to put a little bit of silicone compound on the threads. It makes the cap easier to turn. Lube the inside for the O-ring that's in here. So that I don't always have to monitor the gauge inside the dash. I uh, use my scan tool. We're just under 90 degrees right now. So it's easier for me to see the uh, laptop screen than it is the driver's uh, the instrument cluster. Might as well also check for codes. No codes found. All reading has passed. And uh, we'll zoom in here. 60, 70 degrees. And then I also have short trim fuel trim here. Um, I view it like this because sometimes this doesn't move for a long time and I don't know if it lost communication, the scan tool. So as long as I see short-term trim, short-term fluctuate, uh, that tells me I have a good connection. So I'm starting to get nice heat inside the car. 77. Upper hose is getting nice and warm. 
lower one is still cold, so that means the thermostat is still cold, that's good. Once it hits around 90, 91, the temperature will stop rising. It'll just uh, be plateauing for a while, and that's an indicator that the thermostat is open and that the coolant is now circulating through the radiator. Uh, thermostat usually starts opening at around 87. Um, so it's been hovering at 89 right now for a while, so it may already have started opening or started to open. Once the cold coolant from the radiator has gone through the engine, um, the, eng the temperature will start to climb again. And um, starting about 96, the fans should come on 96 to 98. Uh, on the 1.8 T's can be a little bit hotter, but usually that's what I see. Lower hose is starting to get warm. Starting end of September, I was getting eczema or eczema spots, really itchy. Um, so I'm using this right now, which is pretty good, along with a uh, steroid cream that my doctor gave me so it's almost gone what do you guys usually use uh, i don't always get it but this this year for some reason it, it's it was really bad along the finger here my hands are drying out and uh, but this is working pretty good it keeps the skin moist and hydrated i think the biggest problem was when i used gloves is that I use my uh, or I, I use baby powder to slide the gloves on, and I think the baby powder dries out the hands. So I try not to use the baby powder too much these days. Ninety-three. Lower hose is nice and hot. Similar temperature as the top. The fan should be starting. The fan should come on soon. 94 They just came on both fans are running as you can see All done double check for leaks Recheck the coolant level after the engine has cooled off That's why I always go a little bit higher And temperatures dropping because the fans are on that's it. Thanks for watching.